Kant's Ellis Conference, day three, session three. <laughs> I think, but I think it's good not to have too many. I think nine. Oh three, no, no, three no, days, no, 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 the top half of the key. Yeah. 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 I really want to think this through. If this is like, it's okay. Things like this are always binding strategies for me. It's like something I really want to write, yes, yes. but I just won't get around to it. Yes. So I like, not worry about embarrassing myself in front of people. I, I, I can see how this is going to uh, going to force me to think about this. All right. Do an official job today. I like the place very much that you're describing, and uh, I want to avoid the error of um, putting it in terms of a. Because I don't need a second second point if it's better to say it's a a distraction. The the funny thing is, I actually think we actually do have to commit. I I, I mean, I think what we said there was exactly what and what it was reasonable. But I think that actually then there is a sense in which others, a new standpoint can be created in which you mathematically characterize the uniform construction of all the things of the standpoint. And that allows you to talk about new issues that were strictly unexpressible, inexpressible in the previous one. This is your. This is what I. This is my actual. This is the yeah. Kant and Redcar. Mm. This is me. <laughs> this, is, this is how it would have gone. And it gets complicated quickly, but I. Uh, well, I, Jim is very kind of the way he does these things, and the. Um, to do it on that problem would be very helpful, and on um, how to attempt to read the thing itself. So, um, dissolves the. But yeah, it's just surely for kind of limit. I mean, well, it is a limit. It's just that you know, the first kind of stuff. That's why that wouldn't also know the limits are not the end of things. Well, the limits one way, the other is that it's an abstraction. Well, it's a limit of the first abstraction problem. Yeah, that's what I think. And then it plays different roles. Nobody seems to care. So he's got the image of the world. Say something. Yeah. 33 is thinking you need to remember that Omega plus 1 is negative. I think it's a little bit strange thing to say. I think it's not just mere math. I think it's just really. There seems to be a resurgence of the metaphysical approach. Yeah. I mean, Carl, the is has had good Carl Anders, but then the, there's a whole bunch of good young people that seem attracted to this. John, you still want me to ask you, what time are you leaving tomorrow morning? Um, 
I thought I was going to say, I, I have to leave partway through this thing. I'm going to be here for the first hour, but I, I'm really looking forward to the discussion. I so wish I could be here for the whole hour. Oh, no, no, no. You go, you're heading back home, are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah. Just as well, I think the polar vortex is going to do something tomorrow. We've got to have a lot No, it's, I mean, it's actually... I think not till the evening, thank God. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Better not. Yeah. But, I mean, that's not, it's not accurate. I, I, I'm going to see a, a newborn baby who's in Chicago. So I have to get there before he falls asleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's the like, that's that's story. That's the, that's the good anyway, yeah. So you're a good person. Yeah. Really yeah, I really like to meet you, Mark. That's, really that's, that's a great reason for Well, <laughs> you know, it's sentimental. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, sentimental. It's not right. 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 It's not right.
be expelled from the, <laughs> <laughs> from the, the circle of genuine analytic philosophers. So I mean, it's, a, you know, it's a bit like belonging to the wrong leftist faction in the 1930s or something, you know, uh, the poo or something, if you're George Orwell, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, but it, it, it seems to me, and, uh, you know, I, looking at the work of some other people like Hugh Price, that has uh, formulated quite well, I think, that um, there's some distinctive features of, of, of contemporary <coughs> neo-pragmatism. Um, one of them that, you know, maybe a bit deeper than it looks is that I think contemporary uh, neo-pragmatists um, have taken the linguistic turn in a more decisive way than the classical pragmatists ever did and um, uh, partly because they think that there is no sophisticated uh, conceptuality without um, mastery of a language and so that's the natural place to look for um, understanding conceptuality but another reason um, much emphasized in the work of Mark Lance and and, and, and Rebecca Kukler is uh, um, much of the tradition this is the uh, communicative aspect of, of, of language, uh, as if that was kind of an add-on. I mean, as in Locke, you know, you do your thinking with ideas, and then, hey, once in a while you might want to <laughs> tell somebody else about them, you know, so you, you have this extra thing. I and mean, if you take those, if you take seriously the idea that um, communication is not just an add-on, and in addition to being, uh, and language is also, as it were, the key to conceptuality, then... Uh, then you're likely to look to the normative pragmatics of, of language use in ways that you're not so likely to look if you, uh, if you start somewhere else. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, um, which marks more of a point of continuity, is um, pragmatists, uh, certainly Rorty talk this way, uh, often call themselves anti-representationalists, but now here there seems to be a bit of a difference. Um, in the classical pragmatists, their anti-representationalism um, often took the form of repudiation of the correspondence theory of truth and, 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 and by extension, correspondence theory of knowledge. I mean, the, the metaphor that Rorty summed up as um, mind is the mirror of nature, it's rejected. So that Peirce says that belief is a rule for action and, 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 and James says the true is what's good in the, the way of belief and things like that. Um, Whereas the, the contemporary pragmatists, on the whole, uh, tend to be tempted by a deflationary view of truth, that there isn't much to truth. It's not that it's uh, an epistemic concept. It's, it's, it's a rather thin concept, and its use is primarily expressive. It enables you to say things and thereby to perform certain speech acts that you couldn't otherwise easily express um, or perform. And... Uh, but then, I suppose no one denies that feature of truth talk, but of course the heart of deflationism is that when you've said that, you've got to the bottom of it. There's no, there are no further depths to, to plumb. And, and so from this re, re, in this respect, Sellers, although a great inspiration via his inferentialist approach to meaning uh, for contemporary pragmatists, so it's an it's account of meaning which is non-representational in the sense that it does not take... Um, as, some, as explanatory primitives semantic relations like reference considered from the word go as word world relations it doesn't do that um, and therefore doesn't think that semantics needs in that way to be naturalized for example as causal theorists to reference might um, so it's a great inspiration but at the same time um, Sellers insofar as he recognized deflationism and he did recognize I think a, a, a proto version of it in the writings of Tarski and Carnap repudiated uh, and, and repudiated it more decisively as he, as he went on I mean there's a, there's a somewhat sympathetic discussion in truth and correspondence but a far less sympathetic discussion in science and metaphysics and in fact what Sellers did was go back to a more classically pragmatist approach to truth namely as a kind of epistemic concept which he calls semantic assertability which is an idealized form of justification so you might think, okay, so that's just going back to the funds at Arigo of, of, of pragmatism. But then he does something else, which is uh, he thinks that there must be something to be captured in the correspondence theory. And so he adds um, 
to his epistemic theory of truth his theory of picturing now it's not strictly a theory of truth but it is a, a kind of corris- word world correspondence that Sellers thinks is very very important not to lose sight of um, and so I wondered about this and uh, was it well motivated and uh, would Sellers in fact have been better off taking the deflationary option as it were that um, contemporary pragmatists take and I, I, the, it's you can't say the answer is yes because he would cease to be sellers I think I mean <laughs> and he does so right because um, it, it turns out I think that this issue in the end ties up even though it seems a bit petty parking it, it actually ties up with sellers whole conception of the task of philosophy in our time the diffusing of the images and the, in, in the light of scientific realism and the, the, it's a way in to the metaphysical aspect of Sellers, um, uh, the aspects of Sellers that are celebrated by what my teacher Richard Rorty used to call right-wing Salazians, and uh, as opposed to people like himself who were left-wing Salazians, uh, they they actually thought that the the upshot of the the normative differentialism in the theory of meaning was in a way a deep repudiation of much of of, of, of classical metaphysics and classical epistemology. Um, Sellers has a tendency, I think. Um, to think that uh, the tra- you could capture good things from all aspects of the tradition, you know that uh, he saw sermons in stones and you know and all that books in the running brooks and good in everything, right? <laughs> uh, which Roddy, of course, didn't, um, and I don't. Having been extensively trained by my <laughs> taskmaster teacher. Uh, Okay, so, so th- that, that, that's the motivation. So um, it seems rather harsh on Sellers, but because my motive is in the end to save what I think is the good Sellers from, from you know, I, I want to save Dr. Jekyll from Mr. Hyde. And, uh, <laughs> so that's, the, that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. It's, uh, that's, that's it. I mean, so, you know, the floor is open. Yeah. I can just this is a very small, uh, uh, I think I'd say, jettical point. Um, you you uh, express a little bit of, uh, I guess, a puzzle over why he seemed as as um, discontented with the Tarski style uh, truth definitions. And well, I know why he was discontented. Yeah. Well, but well, but yeah, you didn't. I mean, it seemed to me that what you what you didn't say. That, that I always thought was was a um, sort of the, the basic source was that he was so he was very dissatisfied with satisfaction, right? And he, which he you know uh, bad as 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 a kind of you know, phone book uh, notion, and, and he thought that that was just uh, sort of. Uh, yeah, well, special pleading in a certain way for, uh, for something and, 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 and that didn't get mentioned as one of the sources of his okay. dissatisfaction but it seems to me that, that's part of it he just thought that was uh, the satisfaction relation just was, was ultimately unsatisfactory well th- th- that's a good point Bill and I, I, should, uh, I, I should say that explicitly because that of course his fields uh, worry about it too in the classic Tarski theory of truth paper I mean, of, of, of course uh, you're absolutely right that um, in, in, in a Tarski quote truth definition the, the satisfaction relation is stipulative I mean, it's not, it, it, it's not a, a theoretically robust notion and that's what Field and Company thought it had to be and it, it's, uh, but that's of course it's not accidental that Tarski's classic paper is called The Concept of Truth in Formalized Languages and it, it's not meant to be um, it's not meant to hook up in any interesting way with uh, the way meaning is is imminent in, in the speaking of a natural language and I, I did think that Sellers sort of thought that if you thought it was um, you'd be in danger of back to the kind of sideways on myth of the given, you know, where, as it were, the basic right. reference relations are, are determined by it, the givenness of an object, as it were, so to say, pre-linguistically or pre which sellers would be pre-conceptually, and then we say, ha-ha, you know, 
that's what I'm going to call red, and um, and that's what I'm going to call cube, and then you. And it, it's the famous passage in EPM about the, the two forms of semantic rules, the right. the word to word and the word to world. And he hooked, he thought of, of, of task, what he called tasky caught up semantics. If you took it outside the realm of formalized language, it, as the royal road to that bad conception of meaning, in right. fact, to no less than the myth of the gift. And I think that's absolutely right. I, um, and, and I should say that more clearly, but what I tried to say is, if you look at the way that the Tarski structure is exploited by Davidson, then you see of course that there really is no uh, need to see it that way and, and, and nor do you need to see truth as a kind of thick um, explanatory notion, even in Davidsonian semantics, when its function is really expressive, in fact it, 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 even there the, the, and, and, and there's nothing in a it, in a funny way, in the end, what a Davidsonian material equivalent T sentence really conveys to you, by virtue of the empirical constraints and formal constraints under which they're generated, is that a dot snow is white, is dot is true, if and only if snow is white. I mean, in some sense, you learn the same thing from, from Davidson. Um, the only thing Davidson likes is that by putting the, the material equivalences, um, you visibly don't take a notion of meaning or anything like that for granted. I mean, you, you, but but you generate them under appropriate constraints so that they're really telling you what Sellers wants to say with with, with the dot quote notation. Um, I think he never saw that option. Hmm. He, it was um, even though he, he lived the, the considerable overlap, um, he never he, he never he never understood. He never took quite seriously either. I mean, you know, that, uh, but, but that would be a whole other thing to go into. But uh, I was saying last night, I mean, he, he, in some sense, he strikes me as the last representative of the, uh, the Russellian idea of logic as the essence of philosophy. You know, if you get the, the logical form of, of, of what we say right, that will be the key to the metaphysics. I mean, there really is a difference between mm -hmm. rabbits and rabbitings, or rabbit. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I want to know what the world ultimately is, what its quantificational structure is, what we quantify over. Is it rabbit parts? Is it rabbitings? Is it rabbits? You know, and um, that, that's the weird part of Sellers that I, I, I don't want to... He's not the last. I really want to ask you a question about... Um, in more detail, Mike. Yeah. I have a sense of this from this paper, but I, I thought for this conference it would be a good question to ask. Is to press you a little bit more on just what kind of left-wing solarism you are? Um, that is, what you like and what you don't like. But, I mean, first thing I just say that, I mean, you know, the ways people like Roydy and then Brandon use the expression right-wing and left-wing solarism, it makes it sound like, you know, there's some, you know, there's some original doctrine in Hegelianism and, the left and the right split because the left people like this half and the right people like that half and so they're they're inheriting different pieces of the original teaching whereas my sense of it more is that the right wing Solarians think you can have all of it and all fits together and it's great whereas the left wing people actually what they have in common is there's certain things they don't like in common but then they're pick and choose Solarians and then left wing Solarian turns out not to mm -hmm. name much of a class with the unity because it depends what they pick and choose and they're picking and choosing different things um, now um, um, now you know, I, I, I'm inclined to think something like if you do have Sellers' attack on intentionality as a relation and you do kind of want to um, take his line on the semantic and you, you are as worried about word world relations as he is and so forth then you're going to have a rather mysterious view unless you get unless you get back into your picture somewhere what you've knocked out there which he tries to do with various devices you know various moving parts of the story one of which is picturing now I, I don't find the stuff on picturing very satisfying I also don't completely understand it but but what's but what's striking about especially Brandon but also Roy to some extent who is a lot less clear about this um, the, who are two kind of our our paradigms of card carrying so our scenes is they want to accept his way of sort of junking those notions without the right wing solarianism. So um, 
you know, I find you know it very mysterious to understand the year in which reference has been explained in that way, and there are no world relations in the idea. Uh, well, well, it's, and, 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 um, remember, nobody says there's no word world relations. Okay, right, but but what but what I what I mean is that. Um, well, I mean, I don't know if nobody says it, but but at any rate, um, well, no, Zalarzian does. <laughs> I literally don't know anyone who ever said it. Well, at any rate, um, random. <clears throat> Let's not worry about the details. I mean, I think the more general point here is you might think in giving up on the picturing, what you want to do is also give up on the radicality with which um, Sellers has junk notions like intentionality and the radicality with which you have to rethink reference. Or you might think, oh, you can just keep that part of Sellers without the other part. I mean, I would take McDowell and Brandon to differ on this point. I mean, yeah. um, I, I would have thought, you know, McDowell was going to want to disagree with both those parts of Sellers, um, whereas Brandon thinks you can just subtract the one part but still keep the other part and have a have a have a perfectly good view. And I was kind of curious where you are on this issue. Oh, yeah. it, it wasn't it wasn't absolutely clear to me from from reading this. Um, okay. Um, well, yeah. Um, How wordy are you, expert? Well, uh, l- l- let me say I, I I don't think it's pick and choose because I, I in terms of Sellers, and maybe we'll get around to this. I actually think some of Sellers' views about meaning and uh, are in tension with some of the metaphysical intuitions that um, that that drive his philosophical program. Um, I think that but, but uh, you're happy with all of the views about meaning. Well, let me get around to that. Um, uh, uh, I think that um, when you say you're an anti-representationalist, the trick is to say you're a theoretical anti-representationalist, from which I think it does not follow that reference might not be a kind of mapping from, you know, words to things or something. What matters is that if you want to think of it that way, as in the Davidsonian canonical theory of meaning for a particular speaker, it should be fallout from use patterns that are identifiable without making any reference to those semantic notions as theoretical primitives. So that's why I distinguish what I call theoretical representationalism from functional representationalism, from, I don't know, relational, whatever you want to call it, semantic representationalism. I think Rorty was totally unclear about that. I mean, Rorty says things like, you know, languages for coping, not copying. And it's uh, pretty clear in certain papers he wants to throw away the very idea of representation. He doesn't just want to. I mean, yeah. That's a quote of Rudy. And Branham isn't just saying a certain kind of explanatory direction from semantic. I know what Branham's saying. Yeah. Yeah. He wants yeah. to reverse the explanatory direction, which is, which is different than just rejecting the explanatory. Well, I don't like the reversal talk. I mean, because that's like, you know, you've got. But so you're parting from those left wings of ours, as I hear you. What you do is, um, I mean, look, my Sellers is read rather heavily through the lens of Davidson. That's absolutely right. As someone, so, so, so the first thing you need to do when you're approaching this, even in this kind of Davidson spirit, is, I mean, Davidson, I think, makes things complicated because what he means by theory of meaning is not what a lot of people mean by theory of meaning it's, it, it's a specification of the meaning of the words of some particular speaker or, or language group it's not a theory of the nature of meaning the theory of the nature of meaning is implicit in the methodology by which those as it were local theories are constrained and, and that methodology is used theoretic now um, there's room for enormous difference and I think you're going to you know think that um, this is where you're going to come in. Um, what Sellers calls, Davidson calls observation sentences, and Sellers calls language entry transitions, play a critical role in this methodology. They're where the world world relatedness first gets in. Not as yet the fully fledged semantic relation of reference, but as a kind of reactivity to or guidance by the environment. Now, there's an interesting question of how thick a notion of that you want to take. I mean, so within the left-wing camp, you get very thin notions. The thinnest no- Brandom has the thinnest notion, I guess. You know, reliable, uh, discriminative, yeah, whatever. You know, R D R D, reliable, discriminative, responsive, 
disposition. Um, that's something you can describe without any of the stuff we were talk we've been talking about in this context, you know, presence uh, of objects and so forth. Um, it's an interesting question as to um, who's right about that. Um, nevertheless, what's in common, whether one takes a thinner or a thicker notion, is that the, the reaction to, the conceptual reaction to, or, or the presence through perception of the object is never, so to say, a mere labeling reaction. It's only because these reactions or presences are also caught up in further discursive practices that they're not just, as Rodi liked to say, parroting, you know, saying red in the presence of red things, or the way the, way the Skinner rap you know, reacts to the red light because it gets the food pellet. It, it, it's the it's the the inferential articulation, um, the way these things are caught up in, in in these other normatively constrained practices that that makes either the observation statement or the perceptual report, which is perhaps a, a richer notion, what it is. It, with, without those further engagements, it wouldn't be what it is. It would be a mere presence, and that's not, that's not a conceptual reaction. So, so there's a common thread, I think, that runs through um, the left-wing Salazians. Uh, but there are disagreements, uh, particularly with respect to the so-called language entry transitions, as to how how, f how thin you can make that notion and, and, and still get it to do the work that it wants, that it needs to do. And I think you think it needs to be a richer notion than, 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 than Brandon does, for example. Uh, or even, perhaps even Sellers at the, at, in the Section 8 of EPM, which is the most Brandomian, um, which is why it's the one he cites all the time rather than any of the other stuff. So, so no, I don't think it's just a kind of ragbag of people who are... I actually meant to be focused, I agree there's issues there, I actually meant to be focusing on the other side, which is, say you abstract away, you know, what Branham calls empirical content, and you're focusing on the story of conceptual content, yeah. even if you think you can abstract in that way, I mean, which would be a question, um, you know, how should we understand, you know, what kind of content that is, and where the notion of intentionality could come in if at all. I mean, in, in, in Brandon's story, it's sort of the slippage between the transitions, the um, you know, inferential transitions. I'm willing to endorse the ones you're willing to endorse that, that allows there to be, you know, something I check myself against such that I can get rightness and wrongness. It's a story in which um, yeah. we don't need intentionality at all in order to get content. Um, so we can completely abstract from the RD, RDs conceived as they are. Um, that seems to me, you know, a dimension along which... Um, left wing Salarzians can disagree quite a bit too. I, I think you're, it's probably right that the two issues are ultimately related. If you think you can't pull these things apart in a certain way, then you're, you're going to have trouble with both sides in a certain way. But it was, it was on that side that I was kind of worried. Sorry, which is the second side? I've, the second side is, um, I mean, what, what, is, what, is it, you know, what, what does it take to fund a story about what it is, you know, to think of the celestial city, you know, for a thought to be of something? That seems to me something where, you know, Sellers thought, given how much, uh, here's a way of putting it, I think Sellers thought, given how much he thinned that notion out on one side of the story, he needed to bring something else in yes. to secure that. A certain kind of left-wing um, Salarzian jucks you know, the stuff he adds to that, but still wants to keep the really thin story of what funds, you know, the of of thinking of the well, Salarzian I, I, I don't know how... how Thin it is, Jim. And I'll tell you what I think. Um, well, I was asking how thin yours was. Well, mine's not terribly thin. I mean, I methodologically, um, I think the the home of the concept of meaning is is in the end in communication and, and understanding each other and in, interpretation. And um, I, it's. It's not reductive. Now, Sellers, I think, has, has, has reductive tendencies, like it or not. I mean, um, and I don't think of it that way. I, I'm not looking, um, I'm not going to use meaning as, as, as a kind of theoretical notion at all, partly because I don't think 
I think sameness of meaning is just, as Sala says in these better moments, similarity of meaning. It's not a theoretical concept. Um, but we look at the pragmatics of what we do when we talk to each other and when even when we talk to ourselves and, uh, you know, and, and, and think. Um, look at the kind of normative considerations that, that constrain that. Um, some of which I think, you know, never go away. Some of which are relatively local and, and, and <coughs> subject to, to change. Um, there's, no, the, the, there's no reductive intention to reduce, you know, to get this to be something else. In fact, that I think is on the other side of the coin. That's people who think that, well, look, something like reference is the fundamental theoretical notion. And then if you have Sellers' worries about naturalistic worries, then you think, well, I'd better somehow get that into the, into the world via some kind of causal account of it or something. I don't think that. And I'm not looking for it. For me, that I'm not, I don't object to there being a relation of reference, but it's fallout from these other considerations. It, it's downstream from the pragmatics of communication. So we have three fingers here. One, two, three. Yeah, my com common concerns, Davidson, which he had brought up. Um, yeah. I'm a bit puzzled about your characterization of Davidson's project. Yeah, I mean, with paper, you, you say he's in the business of explaining meaning. Um, and you also attribute to him the view that the, the notion of truth is somewhat independent graspable of the notion of meaning, right? And this suggests that you attribute to him sort of account um, of the nature of meaning. Now you you you, you take took back this this sort of um, attribution of a specific theoretical project towards Davidson in your in your in your statement now. But still, I'm puzzled about what you mean when you attribute to him some sort of attempt to explain meaning. I think Davidson never describes himself as as trying to explain meaning. I mean, in the end, when he describes the purposes purposes of his project of rhetoric and invitation and giving a kind of the bright form of her semantic theory, he says that um, I would like to illuminate the semantic, psychological, uh, pragmatic pro uh, concepts and how they um, are inter interdependent. So, so I understand Davidson more like saying um, truth is an important notion in this net network of concepts, but surely it's not um, graspable, independent of the notion of meaning, for instance. So it, it can be employed in order to give uh, a semantic theory as, he's, as he conceives of uh, what a semantic oh, theory is. Oh, I, I, I think that's right. I think you're absolutely right about what he says. I mean, he doesn't say it can be grasped independently, he, but he does repudiate deflationism. He says what you can do is simply um, understand its relation to these other things, to meaning and belief. Um, but I think, in fact, when you look at what he does, that's not what happens. The only... So, um, it's certainly the case in charity, for example, um, that it's not going to be possible for Davidson to interpret a person at all unless you can see that person is speaking truly a lot of the time. That's correct. But that's precisely the generalizing use of truth talk according to deflationists. So my thought is simply that the fight that Davidson repeatedly picked with the deflationists was one he had no reason to pick. That, that's, that, that's all. I mean, you know, if you read his paper, that the folly of trying to define truth, he's upset with Horridge, he's upset with me, he's upset with with all of us. Um, at, at the end of his life, one of his last symposiums, it was him, Horace, and me. And we're still having this go-round. And we're all trying to say, Donald, you know, we're on your side in all kinds of ways. And so I, I just thought that he picked a fight that he had no need to pick. I mean, there's a sense in which I have no objection to talk about, talk about the relation between truth, belief, and meaning. It's just I also think the role of truth talk in saying those things is the generalizing expressive role mm -hmm. that deflation is highlight. I agree. And I yeah. think there are, I mean... But he didn't think that. He thought that you were thickening the concept by 
Yeah, doing but, this. I mean, there are, you find descriptions of, self description of his own project he's after, which fit the bill, that he doesn't need more than a deflationist concept of truth, right? Yeah, Although I, in other passages, I mean, yeah. right, mm -hmm. he goes for, seems yeah. to go for a stronger account, but mm -hmm. I think a charitable reading of Davidson would, would uh, attribute him nothing more substantial value. It's meant to be a charitable reading. I mean, I, you know, my, I introduced this in this 1999 right. paper, this meaning of deflationary truth. It was meant to be a charitable reading. It was meant to say, don't pick a fight with us. We're, you know, we're on the same team. Yeah. But nevertheless, it was maybe some quirk he had. Uh, mm. He would never accept the olive branch for whatever reason. When you offered it to him explicitly, he never wanted it. Uh, but that, that's a point about him, not a point about his view. I agree with right. that 100%. <coughs> okay. Thanks. Um, the first thing is just a detail, but then I'd like to get to something that's in the area of that that you've just been saying. But um, I, I, I'm not even sure that I heard you right. Um, uh, Bill began by saying you've left out the phone book um, thought in, in Sellers' right. hostility to so-called Tuskies. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and did I hear you say um, uh, a, a Davidsonian meaning theory for a language, which you're right to say isn't supposed to be a theory of what meaning is, yeah. uh, what it teaches us is in the T sentences? It, t it, it teaches us what the T sentences we, we, we learn from a Davidsonian T sentence is something that could well be expressed with Sellers' dot quote notation, that's all I meant to say. Yeah, that, but that, that strikes me as wrong about Davidson. Ah. Uh, and, oh. and so, so your, your, your claim in in okay. par partial response to Bill that you're reading Sellers through Davidsonian uh -huh. eyes. If that's what you think Davidson's supposed to be trying to teach us, uh, it, you're leaving out that um, what you're supposed to learn uh, is, is essentially hooked up to the derivation of the damn T sentences. Yes. That they can be derived like this is what you're supposed to learn. So, so um, I mean, as long as you say what you're supposed to learn is simply what the T sentences say, uh, then it's much easier to shove aside um, the, 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 the fact that in the derivations they show up what look, have all the look of semantical word world referential statements, right? But because you're, you're leaving that out. But, but um, if, 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 if it's supposed to be a sympathetic reading of Davidson, you should really... Um, Take account of what Davidson says. We're oh, well, to learn well I, I'm sorry, John. I missed, what I say, yeah. quoting the paper, actually, is that by virtue of the, the methodological constraints, which in, include... Well, the, the methodological constraints are on what you should be looking to try to derive. That, that, that's yeah. right, and, and there are so, two... So they're on the, on the uh, what it takes for a T sentence to be true. Well, but that's only half of the story. You also did mention uh, the formal constraints, but then in your story about what is supposed to be learnable from one of these objects, a so-called theory of meaning. You, you, you seem to leave that <laughs> what's learned from satisfying the formal constraints I, I, out, of, out of account. What, what I said was, um, using actually you know, a, a phrase that I borrowed from Sellers, mm. they convey more than if you looked at them in isolation. Just that, the, as that doesn't do it. So The derivation um, does, yeah. does something more than just that. Well, I, I guess it's I... It's the derivation that does the teaching. But isn't the important well, point... The derivability, or the derivability like this, that does the teaching. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're supposed to learn something from the, from the derivation of a T sentence sure. about how it is that the um, an object sentence composition. semantically hangs together. Oh! Uh, and how... how um, uh, that plus the uh, semantical truths about yeah, the yeah. parts that hang together. Yeah, that. You, you, uh, it, um, in, in, in that sense, it's all it's a theory of logical form. I think that's absolutely right. That's what the derivation mm -hmm. shows you. Um, but what gives it the further empirical content, mm -hmm. more than just the logical yes. form, mm -hmm. are the other constraints mm -hmm. that, as it were, determine in the end how you select mm -hmm. the the reference for the for the primitive parts and so yeah. so the whole thing mm -hmm. gives you that right. plus the logical yeah. 
form of, okay. the, of, of yeah. the sentence. That would be a much more correct way to describe it. That is what I think. I mean, yeah. But, but that, that may be just picky. On yeah. That part, but, um, no, that's absolutely. It's, it's, a, perfect, it's a perfectly good point, and you don't get them. And, and that's something in a way that gives you a more fine-grained picture than mm-hmm. than, than Sal's mere talk about. Yeah. Doc quotes give you, I think, in a way. Is it just mm-hmm. a finer, is just I, I, finer I, I, grain I, 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 in itself? Yeah. You don't lose any of that if you substitute out, put in an anaphoric account. I, mean, I did this as an exercise in grad school. You get a pro yeah, I mean, a pro I'm, I'm, sentence, then you get the same derivations. It, 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 this isn't a defense of yeah. this or that. Right? Nothing right. Right. lost. Uh, the, the, the main thing I wanted to say, but uh, I could perhaps put this in connection with the end of your response to Christian. Um, uh, uh, why didn't Davidson accept the olive branch? Um, uh, um, here's a thing that strikes me as right and as not denied by you, but but um, but somehow you, you don't make enough of a fuss about it. Right? Oh. Um, uh, um, deflationism is just fine uh, as a story about uh, the way the concept of truth works, um, but it presupposes a big fat story about um, what kind of act is. And this is only one of them, so you know, mm-hmm. Mark and Rebecca are not, not being provided for here yet. Yes, but we're, right. we're focusing on declaratives. Right. And we need a big story about what kind of act a declaration mm-hmm. is uh, um, in order to, to uh, have um, the, the, the things that deflationistic accounts of truth right. focus on. So, you know, dot, string, dot is true if and only if string, same mm-hmm. string. Um, sure. Um, that's a, 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 a decent account of truth as long as it's placed in the context of a serious account of declaratives. And um, Davidson, you know, thought it would be a way of putting what Davidson really thought to say, um, yes, and all the meat is there in um, the stuff about radical interpretation and whatever. That's my uh, and you guys don't make enough noise about that. I mean, maybe you do, but uh, Paul Horridge doesn't. <laughs> well, well yeah, um, look, yeah, so, I, I, so, I, I, um, I, I, the olive branch is coming from someone who's, um, by Davidson's lights, doing something like refusing to acknowledge that deflation is, is all right only as um, the, 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 the last tiny little uh, yeah. move in, in a, in a um, what, what would have to be a serious account of uh, that is, that, kind of that is my, that is my view, John, and, and, and that's why well, I, I think know. But I think you don't make enough fuss about it. You identified <laughs> you and Horace <laughs> together. Uh, 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 calling you. yourself a deflationist, um, uh, the very label suggests. About look, truth. look, the, the truth about truth is very simple, and the fact is that it isn't. Uh, and you don't even think it is. Well, the truth about asserting is simple. That's right. right. The, truth the truth about, about asserting is simple. Truth about asserting. A truth yeah. about asserting. A truth about asserting. So, so the, 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 there's something re- very misleading about saying we don't need to make a big deal about truth. Can I, can it's I, as if you were saying we don't need to make a big deal about asserting. Well, I, I that's, think anyway, that's I think how Davidson heard. The, yeah, but the I, I, yeah, but it's, ob- it's, ob- it's, ob- it's, it's obviously not my view. And, um, of course, the reason there isn't a big deal about truth is that the main story has been told elsewhere. I mean, that's, of course, the case. If, if deflationists about truth said that loudly, that the main story is being told elsewhere. But sure, they do. I mean, Brandon says it. I mean... Some do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't know about this three-way with you and... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, Horwich is, um, as, as I bring out, I mean, he's a... a um, he, he's very different because he, he, he's more reductive. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, and that, I, I, as I say, I mean, his relation to Sellers that's is... That's why Davidson hates his, his, his work. Yeah. Um, in a sense, rightly. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but, also, but also Sellers. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, um, I, I, I discussed this a bit en passant in the paper. Um, Horwich thinks that meaning is just, so to say... Um, given by, well he thinks you can even sort of separate out what they are um, these meaning constituting acceptance properties and they're just patterns of, 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 of speech behavior now um, Sellers thinks that's too thin and rightly so and in fact, but, but since he has this principle though that commitment to rules 
must issue in, as it were, mm -hmm. on the whole performance that il illustrates, you know, conformity with them, though not reducible to conformity. I think Sellers has that just right. I mean, uh, what Horridge is looking at are idealizations of, uh, you know, Slavian performance uniformities, failing to see that that's, as it were, what make what gives them the normative of they have. You know, I mean, in other words, he, he, he's got something that's a little downstream from what Sellers has via this principle that he, you. I mean, it, and it's very interesting that he says, Horace always says it, well, it best explains overall speech behavior. The, the certain bits of speech behavior that never get mentioned, like, oh, I'm sorry I misspoke, or that's not what I meant, or something. You know, I mean, that's part of speech behavior too, right? I mean, self-correction and so forth. And that never comes up. I mean, uh, and... Um, but it would come up for sellers, you know, uh, when you realize you violated a rule of criticism or something, or somebody points it out and, you're, you know, you weren't as you ought to be and, and, and blah, blah, blah. He never sees that as part of the overall behavior that has to be accounted for. Or, um, the minute you put that in, then, of course, this stripped-down regularism looks like a non-starter. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so I, I can insert myself in for just a second. So, to answer Jim's question, right? I mean, I, I, I think I, I'm a close ally of Michael's, and I want to just get on the table that I think there is a real challenge there. If you separate off, as it were, the inferential, as if it's a freestanding uh, autonomous component, then you're very likely to go the Brandon way, where that becomes just manipulating symbols and scorecards and things like that. And I wanted to, you know, all this talk about cognitivism, it seems to me that's, that's as bad a theory of cognition or inference as it is of anything else. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it, it, it's nothing. It's just moving mm -hmm. bits about. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so that me or Rebecca and I, our answer is very seriously John's idea that the world has to be involved in the normative constraining of us and to try to spell that out by showing how that the inferential moves and the perceptual moves and all of these moves are object involving in very concrete ways and so we turn, we, you know, we're not going to take that, that separation for society. and I take it this is a little different than focusing on the radical interpretation points but it's a, not giving a theory of reference, mm -hmm. it's, it's much more a theory of receptivity, and B, it's, you know, it's bringing in a kind of world's involvingness of just the sort that you think has to be there. Right, no, that's great, but what I'm pointing well, out think, is, yeah. is once you have that kind of view, notice what incredibly different things you're going to wind up calling a left wing Solars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be because what's happening there is, I mean, just to put it very crudely, the way Sellers wanted to get the world back in through picturing is being rejected. But you, one realizes somehow we need world involvingness from the get go. So we can't just accept what's left of. Sellers' view, minus his way of getting the world in. But we need the description of the stuff that the left wing Solarzians are taking re described. I, I but there's another thing that. which is left wing Solarzianism, which I think is kind of vague and roary and yeah. becomes much clearer and random, which really is to sort of try to tell a story about intentional content and then enrich the empirical content, which isn't in the relevant sense world involving. Yeah. As if that itself was the myth of the given. You know? I'm not, I'm not you trying know? to defend right. 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 And that's, and that's, that's what I was. I was kind of asking Mike, you know, is what kind of left wing are doing? There's work more there. differences. Well, I mean, there's the, some. Because he was making yeah, like, I mean, this is one side, the look, left wing um, Once you've gone up and running language, which I think, I'm with Mark, it's not necessarily world environment. I think actually what Mark and Rebecca's work did. Uh, I mean, far from really being different from looking at the interpretive angle, um, it shows us how to replace the crude notion of the observation sentence. Mm -hmm with the pragmatics of the observative and, 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 and that's what we're looking at I mean, we and, need to and not we focus exclusively on that no not right. exclusively but the idea that that's the point of contact well it's a point of contact um, it's, it's, it's one it's one, one. Yeah, there are a whole yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. look at everything people do <laughs> yeah okay uh, right. with, with language and, and calling um, on people is a point of contact yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. also not coming to the story as something that enriches <laughs> the, the core content but uh, let me tell you I mean Brandon does distinguish what he calls hyperinferentialism, which he actually is officially repudiates, right? Which would just be separating off the inferential bit and moving the counters around. And 
He says that's not his view. He accuses Sellers of a tendency not towards hyperinferentialism. Um, it's that plus causation is all. It's just that plus causal, causal connections around the um, side, which is submitted to given. So. But there is a very local bit in Sellers, which I think um, might encourage you to do at least a certain abstracting out for a certain purpose of, of the purely inferential aspect. Um, and it's just this, and if people think this is just wildly off base, tell me, but um, that aspect of meaning, the purely inferential bit, is actually what's preserved when a term crosses the methodological boundary from theoretical to observational. It keeps the same, as it were, intralinguistic character, but it now acquires a use in, an observative, uh, in, in the expression of observatives that it didn't have. And you want to get a dimension of meaning where you say the meaning hasn't changed. I'm still talking about... I'm still saying in some sense the same thing as I was saying before it crossed the boundary. Now, I don't think that's a general account of the nature of meaning, but it's an account of something that's given his, his very important view that the observational theoretical distinction is, is methodological and not ontological. You want something preserved when a term crosses yeah. the boundary. But, but meanings for him are, are, are like species. Yeah. In that, you know, we treat them as if they're nicely contained and, and, yeah, yeah, and, and different, but they're not. They're, no, yeah, they're yeah, populations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I, I want to chime in uh, on the uh, Tarsian point that uh, was made. And I, I think you were generous when you said that the, uh, that the disquotationalists uh, don't emphasize uh, Tarski enough in the, in the program. I think in this paper, it's, it's, it's kind of in a couple of places violated. Uh, I don't. Uh, I have a couple, a couple of quotes. One's on page 15, and one's on page four. And of course, I, I don't know exactly what you're saying when you say compare red stands for redness with the tilde stands for negation. Oh, it's just quoting Sellers, yeah. Right, but I don't. I don't know that you could. You know, I mean, part of the part of the Tarski and the program was to handle this Wittgenstein, this tractarian issue that red stands for redness. Red is, is just gibberish. And it can't be the only way anybody could figure out how to handle those problems was Tarski. And then on page 14, I just, or, uh, sorry, on page 4, there's a quote that says, When we call a sentence in another language that we do not understand true, we must be taken to assert there's a sentence in our own language uh, that's, that is its correct translation, and that is true. But uh, take the sentence. P is true in Estonian, and there is no sentence in English that is the correct translation of P, that's not contradictory. So it's not the case that we must be taken to assert that. Uh, um, and, I, and I don't think that's a trivial point. I think uh, in uh, Harnack's uh, introduction to semantics, he says, a semantical property, I wrote that's what was not, can be predicated in an absolute way that is without reference to a language. If and only if it can be predicated in a relative way that is in the language mentioned of every expression designated an entity in every language. But that doesn't require that there must be an expression in every language uh, which designates this entity. So I, I don't know. I, so I just, I just think the tractarian point is important. I mean, semantics required somebody to figure out how to say this stuff. But in a non... And, and to just make these, you know, remarks that, well, it's just uh, use. Or it's just... You either lose reference. And I think that's what was the point. Uh, you either lose reference or you're not, you're not actually addressing, you know, these problems by the form. Um, look, um... I wasn't endorsed that I wasn't even endorsing that move. A standard objection to disquotationalism where truth is taken to be primitively defined for sentences is that you can't even understand a predication of truth to sentences in other languages because it's only defined for as it were the home language. So a standard move to deal with that is to say that gets you primitive disquotational truth. Um, as you, so what would you be saying um, if you predicate truth of sentences in some other language you might not understand? Well, 
you'd be saying, well, it, 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 it's the functional equivalent um, of something of a sentence in, in my language. And, and that now, look, uh, two things. First of all, I don't. There's, there's no objective notion of correct translation for me, so I don't have that problem. I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, the Estonian sentence says whatever, what, whatever the best thing I can come up with uh, for its saying says so that doesn't bother me at all it might be the case that Marx's anaphoric version of the deflationism is easier though for this particular problem because it comes more or less down to whatever he said that <laughs> you know right uh, whatever it was he said I'm going with it I mean you know uh, and, 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 and the anaphoric view actually is a bit neater I think in that in, in, with respect to this particular problem than this but it's, but it's like a, it's like a Mysterian version of intentionality though I mean it doesn't no it's got nothing to do with intentionality it's got to do with the expressive function of truth talk I mean intentionality as John McDowell was saying is handled prior I mean the reason there's not much left to say about truth and you may just think this is a huge promissory note is that meaning has been handled and we, we've got a notion of proposition on the table or assertion on the table if that's doable then you can afford to be very thin in what you say about truth now if you don't think that's doable that's another problem altogether I mean so John's right about this deflationism about truth has to be bought by a better story about assertion and propositional content in ways that don't um, invoke classical semantic notions as explanatory primitives. That's the that's the hard work. Um, I mean, obviously, if you think that's broken back, then you, deflationism is not on the table. It can't be. Uh, that's just right. Michael, can I follow up on this? Because yeah, I I, I want to really insist. So first of all, the Anfor theory isn't mine. <laughs> it's Grover Campbell. I know, as the one you mentioned, I endorse it. Yeah, and it's I kind of an anaphoric position. I, I, I think there's a huge advantage to your project, a, a whole cluster of related advantages to that over the Horowitz, the Davidson. The, and here's the fundamental difference: for all of those other views we're still expressing something in a meta language that is to say we're talking about language that's right yeah whereas for the the anaphoric theory tells you what the pragmatic function of truth talk and reference talk and predication talk and there's pro adverbs you know he did yeah. it that way yeah 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 and so did jim yeah we, so we can we can make very there's just a, a device for creating variables out of any grammatical position you like, and then they all work. There's an absolutely uniform account of how they all work. They all allow for lazy uses. You know, yeah. when Michael went to the store. So did I. It's a yeah. pro predicate. Yeah. Uh, uh, they also they all, all work have, have quantificational uses, and they all have this kind of very important. Uh, intersubjective uh, inter uh, borrowing of knowledge use, right? So, you know, David's talking about some obscure person I've never heard of, and I say, wow, he sounds interesting. And I can assert of that person that they're interesting without having a clue who I'm talking about. Or, you know, somebody's talking about a weird scientific particle that I have no idea what kind of thing it is. And I can yeah. still say, I can say things of it because I borrow, and that requires an aphra, essentially requires an aphra. Uh, and and <coughs> all the truth claims are object language claims. They're, they're just saying, like, he, or it, or that, or they're just, they're, they're no more going into the meta language than using he is. Uh, which is, I think, a big advantage because then it doesn't bring with you <coughs> any kind of commitment to the structure of what the meaning theory is. And then in the German case, or Estonian or whatever, I can say, you know, I trust you, so that's true. What have I said? I've said whatever the hell you said. That's right, yeah. And I, but I haven't committed myself even to the grammar of Estonian, which would be kind of crazy to think that I had to commit myself to... Which, which the seller's version, at least I got to know how, what got put in the doc quote. Yeah. Maybe I didn't even get enough of it to do that. I can't even identify the sentence. You know, Mark, this is very helpful. Uh, I used to Just think, better. I used to think, um, and, and you've got a long way towards convincing me that this was wrong, um, that 
the in-house debate between different varieties of deflationists mm -hmm. didn't matter that much because wherever you, st wherever you started as it were the same problems would come around you know in more or less the same way so uh, and the inspiration of this was thinking well you know um, um, Horridge starts with propositions but he's got to tell us what, 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 what they are um, you know um, just quotationalists start with sentences of the language but then they need to explain something about um, how you can predicate truth of sentences in other languages and so then in the, you know uh, so to get to extended disquotational truth from primitive disquotational truth they need something like a notion of interpretation or, uh, or, or translation so my thought used to be that they're just moving the bump in the carpet around. I mean, and, and, but, 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 but it doesn't matter much where you start, provided you get the carpet flattened eventually. But you're, what you just said has made a big impression on me because, um, and even from a Salazian standpoint, it, Sellers used to think that these, some of these philosophically problematic concepts, like truth, semantic concepts, like modal concepts, um, are quasi meta linguistic. Mm -hmm. And I think your use of anaphora gives a really good sense of what that should mean. Where, where it, maybe it's not what sellers meant. I mean, they are precisely a device <laughs> for doing firmly in the object language and doing well mm -hmm. something you might think had to be done with meta linguistic predicates but doesn't. Right, right. Um, and that makes a whole bunch of issues and theoretical problems just not just even go away. at this level. Yeah. We can leave meta, meta language to the linguists who can do their, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think I, it's a great I, virtue. I, 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 I never appreciated that virtue of the, of the anaphoric view, so I, I really need to think whether it really is the best way to go. I mean, right now it sounds, it sounds like it should be. I, mean, I think though. it's a friendly amendment. I mean, I no, no, I, it, I think it's an immensely, I think it's, I think it's an immensely friendly yeah. amendment. Um, it, it, it just makes it work smoother. Yeah. Can I, can I be sure I've got it? I mean, it, it, it isn't that it um, um, exempts you from the need to do oh, no, 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 the no, big no. fat thing no. I'm talking about. No, you know, no, no, no. no. I, I, and there are limits on what can intelligibly be referred to by this, by the yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, that's yes. true. That's true. Right. That's the canonical form, right? Yeah. Right. Um, I can't yeah. say that's true. No. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, Pointing point to, point to the bottle or something. Right. That's right. right. You can only metaphorically yeah. pick up a declarative, and then right. And then you still have to still have to be a big. Yeah. So it's simply simply a question about what the best way to formulate that's right but the, the, the thing that you are entitled to say very thinly about truth that's right this is all I yeah. need to say about truth mm -hmm. but I used to um, think it didn't within I, the agreed need for uh, I, I used, to, context, I, I used so. to think that last question how to say about the thin notion I used to think that not much turned on it well in a sense not much does yeah not much does but, but nevertheless mm -hmm. I, I never saw a decisive advantage even even in, within the kinds of you know little importance that it has of doing it one way rather than the other, Marx suggesting that it, 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 it is a, it is a to, to just explain an yeah. operator pragmatically versus yeah. committing yourselves to infinite sets of propositions that <coughs> stuck into biconditionals. When you know, I mean the, the trivial objection to that is there is no set of all three sentences mm -hmm. for propositions because for every set. There's the proposition that that set's not the empty set. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just false. <laughs> it's just the, the, the well, I, claim look, is just false. Look, sorry, that's a different objection. You know, I, I mean, well, I, I think math anyway. Yeah, and, and I think these sort of equivalent schemas. I mean, they can't really. They're not really meant to define an infinite set of axioms. You have to somehow. And maybe this is another bad thing with this approach. They they are a way of gesturing towards a class of. of of good material inferences, uh, but gesturing towards is the right is the right way to say it. I mean, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, John, John. Um, I, I'm not sure whether this is just picky, and I'm, I'm not that convinced of the virtues of the excellence of the an anaphoric okay. story. Oh, okay. okay. Um, uh, thinking back to the case of the uh, sentence in Estonia, and you don't have a clue, but um, for some reason you <laughs> <laughs> believe that this, uh, well, you've got to believe it's a declarative. Yes, you do. Uh, and you've got to um, be 
very trustful of this guy who is speaking to you. And, this, and, uh, and then you say that's true, and the story is essentially, by saying that's true with an anaphoric reference to something which you know to be a declarative, uh, you yourself um, perform that declarative, that same declarative, that's I the point. I undertake the commitment. So um, but now it strikes me as very peculiar to, to um, make room for <laughs> performing <laughs> declaratives where you don't know which <laughs> declarative it is that what you, you are, right? that you are performing. And that is where, the, isn't that where you're going with this? Sure. Um, uh, this, this guy never says anything except what's true, so um, I, I want to say... We take on unknown what he's saying, you can't, you can't actually do that, say whatever it is that someone is saying. I, at any rate, doing that isn't saying something. Uh, yeah? it's, it's not saying something, right? That's it's, important. It comes with saying. That you know what you know what you're. But about. you, but you can't say things like, you know, look, I don't know what John told you, and I don't want to know, but but, but whatever it is. It's true. I mean, I, 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 I can say that. That's a yeah, perfectly reasonable but, um, It's not a good thing to say. To, to, to say what true is doing there is well captured uh, by thinking about a, a canonical form that is exemplified in, in, in the, the original case of the un, un, not understood Estonian. I mean, um, by all means, you, that, you, know, you can, whatever, whatever he told me is true. But that's an unknown commitment, yeah. I mean, I, I, unknown I, commitments are fine, but you know. declarative, where, which declarative it is that you are performing is unknown to you. That's different. That's right. That, that's why the, the that's M4 right. theory says you merely pick up the commitment to the content. You're not, it's not that you're doing the same act in all respects. It's not okay. an absolute equivalence of, of, of pragmatic function in every way. But look, if, if, if you're, you know, you're some Estonian scientist and you say something and I say, yeah, that's true, and then you walk in and you say, well, what he said was this, and here's a reason why it's false, I have to say, I was wrong. Yeah. I guess I, I, guess I mm -hmm. was wrong. Mm -hmm. So you can challenge, so I said something that's incompatible with all the things that his thing but, is. But all versions of, of uh, deflationism We'll have that oh, yes. that. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, the, the, the only special virtue, in my view, of of the anaphor theory is it, it gives you all that without all the baggage that comes with making it a metalinguistic predicate. Because I don't see. I don't have to talk about baggage. Well, propositions and 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 con, con, uh, conditions of meaning. Well, Horwitz explicitly comes yeah. with propositions. But it is yes. Okay, so I'm going one at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, others come with a, a precisely meaning a systematic translation, mm -hmm. a, a meaning to believe in systematic meaning equivalence across languages. I don't want. I want to be in a place. Oh, but I think. That, but you know, I so mean, this is just a way of doing it yeah. that doesn't mean any of that stuff. But oh, I don't think any form of deflationism needs that. I mean, um, you know, look. Um, Depending on the story you tell about assertion and content, that either will or will not be one that is friendly to the idea of meanings in the way that Horwich's theory is meant to be. Mm -hmm. It might just be that saying the same thing is itself, uh, you know, a deeply purpose relative pragmatic notion. You and I are saying the same thing mm -hmm. if we can, you know, communicate usefully with respect to present intents and purposes. If, if, if we've got inferential connections flying off that are irrelevant to what we're up to, that's so true. what? I mean, it doesn't matter, but deflationism is neutral on... on, on no, that's a, that's a theory of meaning. You could say it's all contextual and messy. I don't care about that. I, I actually you just don't said about propositions and this, yeah. like... How there there has to at least, in the, on some versions of the deflationary theory, you have to at least be able to say whether the thing that's inside the quotation marks in some sense, contextual or whatnot, means the same as the thing in, that, I'm, that I'm putting on the right side of the biconditional. And, right. I, and I don't think we should have to have... I, I don't think that to say that's true, I have to commit myself to anything about that. Anything at all. That might be right. I mean, I, I, mean, uh, I just want to get the view straight. Um, um, so, so, you know, this is Vlad the Estonian. Mm -hmm. He says something Estonian. I understand Estonian. You don't. Um, so he says this thing that's unintelligible to you. But but you know Vlad the Estonian to be flawlessly 
you reliable. Might take Jim's word for it. I might even ask Jim. Truth. I'll just say, yeah. is that true, Jim? Right, right. But 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 but, but yeah, I don't, I'm not going to run it like, that way. So so you just know. Okay. So he says this thing. And we both think. You know, that's true. That's that's true. Um, um, as it happens, what he said was, the wise thing to do would be to leave the room immediately. Okay. So we both think that's true. Um, I get up and leave, you stay. Um, because although you think it's true, you have this slight handicap over me that you don't understand it. Um, now, now, um, now um, what's right is that um, there is a kind of officially washed out um, thing that can be said of both of us, that we both believe that which he said is true. You know, That's true of you and that's true of me. Um, but um, my understanding of that which he said, sure. you know, um, confers further, you know, commitments on me. Sure. Whereas you're incredibly indeterminate thing that we mean by, which really something like whatever he says is true. He said something, whatever it is, it's true. Um, actually confers no commitments on you. No, it, con- um, it confers right. lots of commitments. I just don't know what they are because he, <laughs> listen. Well, I mean, I mean, at the moment, okay. I, I, I take your point. It's different from what I said. But but what I mean is, it doesn't it doesn't at present. Because commit hey, me to hell a lot. You know, it commits um, me to lots of things. It commits me to the incompatibility of we should stay in the room. It commits, I, I challenge, you can challenge me, and I will have to say I'm wrong if you explain what he meant. And just, right, okay, I agree. But all I'm trying to say is that, um, I mean, the, the, that, I don't the, understand it, right. The that clause is in those two cases. I mean, I'm not denying that the that clause can pick out something. I'm not, that, not resisting that part. It's just that. What the that clause actually picks out in the two cases is anaphorically something. But it seems to me it, it rather it, it incredibly different what it picks out. The thing it's picking out in the one case could only be characterized incredibly high level of indeterminateness. No, in the other case, what it's picking out is something far more determinate. Which I think it's picking out exactly the same thing. It's just that the speaker doesn't know. I don't know what I've picked out. And that's a virtue of the theory. And right, because you all are doing it all the time. How many people in here believe quantum mechanics is true? Raise your hand, seriously. <laughs> How many people know what it is? How many people can explain it? <laughs> A lot fewer, right? We all accept, we all commit ourselves to the truth That's of claims cool. by Brown. That, 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 uh, you can say we were disagreeing about that. Well, you don't know what it is that they claim. Uh, yeah. that well, they James, Jim's acting like that's strange. No, 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 no. no. no I would say not. I'm perfectly happy mm-hmm. to accept that you have an anaphoric operator in both cases, and it commits you to something. My question is whether it's a good theory to say that that we should think of the that as picking out the same. You know, is in all respects the same, and what it's picking out is obviously in some respect the same. Well, do you think these guys are committed to the to quantum mechanics? That is the same thing the physicists would talk about, I, or or some other? Is it some other theory that they believe is true? I mean, that would be weird. How could there be? A, how could it be anything different? Mm-hmm. This, I mean, that, this is not arguing that this is better than other deflationary theories right now, but he's saying that. It's weird. I, I take it they all have this implication. The yeah, implication they do. Yeah. It's funny. Right. All deflationary theories have the implication you're talking about. It doesn't matter. It doesn't select one as no, particularly no, weird. No, I, I just think I get this. I think this is a virtue, and I get it easier than the other people do. But you've got to go non-deflationary if you want to say that the content that I get when I say something is true is different. The content I'm related to when I say something is true is different than the content a person who knows more is related to. You have to go, you know, individual psychologists about it, which is bad. That's the virtue of deflationism. It is. That you don't commit to anything extra right. in predicating truth or anaphorically picking up. I mean, right. what you commit to is what is said to be true. The, the content mm-hmm. that is said to be true. That's the huge virtue of deflationism. Whereas if you're one of these, you know, they're not so popular as they once were, but people have thought it was this complex causal, you know, all this whole thing. You, you're committed to this relation no one knows how to describe, you know, holding between words of the world. But you aren't. You're committed to what was said. I mean, when you say that's true, I mean, there's nothing else you're committed to. I mean, uh, you're not even committed to the existence of language. You're not saying that language exists. No, you're not, actually. <laughs> right. Maybe that's right. But that's that, like a reductio. But. I mean, it, it, what, what you're affirming sounds like a reductio of the position. 
We're not committed to language. We're not committed to anything. We're not going to understand anything. We're just committed we're to We're saying something. We're saying we're just committed to what I want to say. Of course, embedded in an enormous context of uh, you, you reliable might. scientists, long history, educated people. But, the, but, but, but that's what kind of nothing I said is true. Is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Whatever, look, remember, it's all parasitic upon what it takes to assert. So if you think that to assert that, that this has got water in it involves lots and lots of other commitments, then ipso facto, all of those background commitments are involved in saying it's true that there's water involved here. But no it's, more are involved. There's nothing Robert, new good. brought in. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you can have the richest theory of holism you want for what it is right. to say that there's water, but you're not adding a single new thing. Right. Thing. And furthermore, it's true that there's water. True. Yeah, I mean that, that's the virtue of deflationism. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't add a thing by there may be a very rich background of epistemology and practice and history to saying that p right, but that that p is true doesn't add to it. Whereas there were once popular theories that thought it added added enormous amounts to it. Well, yeah, but I, I thought the comparison was between somebody who knew what that p amounted to yeah. and somebody who didn't. Well, that and that, that, that could the, be a lot. The of claim things. is those two people are in exactly the same position with respect to is true. That's the claim, right? The claim is that those two people are committed to the same things at the end of the day. Whether they know they, it or they not. They may or may not know what they're committed to. Well, that's right. But that doesn't seem to address the question what they yeah. are doing in, in picking up saying those commitments. That's, that's true. That's they're right. undertaking those commitments. That's it. Well, there's two different ways of understanding. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Mark. You, you have to be careful about saying things are true. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. <laughs> that you don't understand. It's a dangerous thing. It's a really risky thing to say. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like taking on the terms and conditions box. <laughs> That's right. It's exactly like taking the terms and conditions box. It, it's exactly yeah. like that. That's what it is. And it's yes, a, it's you're going to be all responsible it's for It's agreeing it. to fine print in the contract that you didn't read and probably didn't understand. That's exactly, <laughs> it's exactly it. It's the same speech. Yeah. Mind you, mind you I don't think any, I think prop, you know, it's not just quantum mechanics, like virtually everything you ever say, you don't actually know all the implications of. Sure. Well, well, not be any of it. But there's case. something you understand, you know, some implications. Yeah, usually it's weird that you do the Estonian black thing. box. I mean, it's not, I'm not trying to make it rational to just be doing <laughs> random Estonian things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying what you would be doing. I'm not going to hang around you very much. <laughs> right. I don't trust Estonians. <laughs> uh, no, Mark's right. It, it's a bad idea. It's a it would, it's a speech act that would be a bad idea to actually perform. I mean, of course. I mean, that one. It also sounds like making a reduction. No, it's, it's, I don't in any way disputing that there's an interesting sense of the same in which yeah. the person committing themselves yeah. to the sense they don't understand and the person who does are committing themselves to the same thing. Not disputing that, although you keep hearing me disputing okay, that. The, the question is whether um, the only ways of, uh, as it were, being interested in um, how what each of those two people are committing themselves to, and whether it's different or the same, allows for individuation along that dimension, the one in which they come out the same. And anything else is just a bad philosophical idea. I mean, oh. t- take a rather different issue, but it seems to me it involves some of the same things, but what's, it doesn't involve you know, that clause, so maybe it simplifies things a bit. I mean, we, you know, we go to some place where there are only hunter-gatherer people. We go to West Union or something, and, um, and some piece of you know, military you know, Air Force ordinance has been dropped. Unfortunately, it didn't explode. You know, we, we're going to recover it. And, but unfortunately, the natives have gotten there first, and they're kind of fascinated by this shiny you know, thing that clearly didn't grow out of the ground, but they have no idea what it is. Um, and um, now you can ask me, you know, we've got our surveillance equipment. Do they see the bomb? And they say, yeah, they definitely sighted the bomb. They see the bomb. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Now, um, in what sense, it's true that they see the bomb. That they and I see the same thing. Understood in another way, attributively, um, they haven't got the concept bomb, sure. and they don't see the bomb. There's different ways of, as it were, you know, describing what they see. And for one respect, saying they see the bomb is fine, and it picks out something very important, which is, that which they're describing as I don't know what, this weird, miraculous, divine gift, um, and the thing I'm describing as the bomb, you know, have the same reference. In another way, I'm describing forms of individuation of content 
you know, in their perceptual experience that they don't have. Um, and similarly with the two that clauses, I mean, there's obviously some level at which, um, you know, that which you commit myself to and that which I commit myself to are the same. But for all sorts of purposes, um, it's going to be very important to realize when um, the reason I'm leaving the room and you don't is because, you know, you know, that which I've committed to myself to is in another respect in terms of the extent to which I can individuate the content uh, and you can. Very different, which is why you're not leaving and don't even have the thought of leaving. And why do you think that's... A, a challenge in any way because Michael started with the point well that, I'm not sure if the challenge this, that there's all sorts of things you have to say about content and yeah. grasp of content and thought and understanding and the whole point is just to say tr- truth talk doesn't isn't a useful postulate for that but of course we still have to talk about all that all I'm saying is it seems to me if we, if we are doing an imminent you know account of an aphora you know it's, it's not meta linguistic in the way you want to object then what I'm doing and saying I, I agree with that what, you said, what I'm doing with the anaphoric clause is going to depend upon the degree of individuation yeah. of content I was after, and it might be one in which um, you're not understanding the Estonian is fine, and it might be one in which it isn't. And we, we can't infer from the fact that it's just an anaphoric operator that it's it's the one that works at that highest level of abstraction, so that with respect to that... No, that's, ab- that, that's absolutely right. And, um, but what you bring out with the, the native stuff is something that it's not unique to him, but Brandon, I think, uh, has a pretty good account of. Namely, um, sometimes um, we want to go in for day ray belief attribution, where we precisely want to screen off our inferential commitments or collateral knowledge from whatever we're attributing to the people that we're talking about. So they've seen the bomb, but we're not we're not implying in that in a sense they know of the bomb as it were of what we know to be the bomb that it's in the clearing uh, and, but that mild regimentation of what we mean is precisely just to screen out things that we would infer about the bomb from anything they don't know it's a bomb I mean it is a bomb uh, so that's that, I mean so day ray belief attribution is very useful when you want to endorse certain things but across quite significant differences in collateral knowledge um, you, you need it you need it. it's thinning out the content that you attribute to the other and endorse um, and, and that's something we need to do because we often do differ quite significantly um, with respect to what we know about what's going on or um, people we're talking about maybe we take ourselves to be in a better position so we want to endorse some things um, that we attribute to them but not in a way that implies they endorse everything we would endorse in, in, uh, as, as following consequentially so we need that apparatus that's, but that's part of the story of assertion and content it's not, well, and, and, not, and the, not and that the endorsing function of true has anything there's structure to in the full anaphoric theory for making exactly these distinctions right? remember this is a, is a detailed theory about the variety of anaphoric pro- Form forming operators, and so you regiment things like the wo- the one they refer to as the gift, the part of the gods, yeah. is in fact a hydrogen bomb, and 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 this picks up an- anaphoric to parts of the sentence and not to other parts, and it, so there's not not all. Well, I mean, anaphoric sometimes we just do that sometimes true. we do that that uh, dare attribution just with regular pronouns. The bomb's in the clearing, and they found it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's. The, the it is. But there's actually a very sophisticated way of getting. I mean, there's no the reference there. To, there's there. no implication that they recognized it as a bomb. They found it. I identified it as the bomb. Uh, I was just wondering how, let's say, like an opponent of the Enneford theory who would assert that there are. that has like a fairly robust notion of propositions, for example, that are then only picked out by certain statements, how, how, the, how you would respond to that opponent who would say, for example, in that case, well, the natives are just not able to pick out the same proposition about whatever is specified when we talk about the bomb. That's right. um, and that's exactly the difference, I think, uh, 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 um, 
was was you were driving at in this in this example. Like how does the how does your how do you respond to that opponent? Well, they can and talk about a bomb. They don't know it's a bomb. I mean, that's that's a perfectly good thing to. To say, I mean, I should say this, and I, I don't know whether this divides me um, from Mark or John or, or Jim or other people very much. Um, I'm, I'm a bit more influenced. I'm influenced by Austin also, though. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that the meaning of particular statements in particular circumstances, not always, but in many cases has a very high degree of contextual sensitivity sure. which which tends to get masked in sort of general theories of meaning that, you know, that, that philosophers go in for and um, of course the Salazian framework is fine because you can explain that contextual variability in terms of what counts in the context of justifiably asserting the proposition or what the implications are. I mean, I gave that example from Travis the other day, but I think it's quite a good one. I mean, that, and, it, and it relates back to some of the stuff we were talking about earlier. I mean, there are uses in English where is doesn't mean much other than looks, but looks are actually fairly objective or intersubjective anyway. The lake is so blue today. Um, compare with um, copper sulfate solution is a bright shade of blue. I mean, in the one case, you really are committed to, if you take a small sample out, it will still be a bright shade of blue. Whereas in the case of the lake water, that would just be a misunderstanding of what people are, uh, are committing to when they say the, the lake is blue. Now, I, I think we negotiate this kind of stuff all the time. I mean, um, um, and sometimes talk of propositions is a bit dangerous because they, um, they sound as if, you know, they're floating out there to be grasped or something in ways that float free of, 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 of these quite tightly and, and locally constrained interchanges that we have or communicative interchanges that yeah, we... Yeah, and, and I, I agree with you. So I, I just want to make sure that that's the side I'm on. I mean, yeah. I don't want all this talk about propositions to make yeah. it sound as if... I, I just also um, know positions where uh, um, um, some people would defend a sort of a very fine-grained picture of propositions that are yeah. only floating free from these c contextual factors in the extent that, for example, I think this is an Austin example too. Like if you say like France is like a hexagonal, hexagonal. Yeah. Like if that if the if if the teacher if the geography teacher says that to the kids, he picks out a different proposition than when the geographer says because there's yeah. a different degree of precision implied in the contextual right. in the in the contextual yeah. circumstance where he utters it. But the difference is so to say that these are at, like like this 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 defender of, of these fine grained propositions would say that these are actually two different propositions that are that that are the truth bearers in within these sentences. They're they're not talking they're not expressing the same propositions. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just wondering how you would respond to that. Well, you, you know, look, I mean, in a way, proposition is not one of my words. It's just what is said. I mean, that's you know, a proposition is what is said, and what is said is <laughs> is, is often quite contextually constrained. I mean, there's you know, there's. But, but this is all over the place. Like, I mean, even, even when we quantify that, our kind of contextual presuppositions. I mean. You know, I mean, when, when I tell you, you know, you're hungry, I say, oh, take anything you want from the refrigerator, and then you go home with the light bulb and the shelving. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's not what I meant. I mean, help yourself to anything in the refrigerator, you know. I didn't mean to be fooling you, that, you know, <laughs> since yours is in need of repair or something, you know, right? I mean, um, you know, these are all over the place, right? The movers take everything to the living room. They don't expect them to rip up the floorboards. Um, so, I mean, this is the kind of stuff Robert was saying. I mean, there's a deep background of mutual understandings and practices behind this. I mean, and you're a kind of moron if you don't uh, know how to all social. All of this is fine, but um, no, uh, I don't know, comfort for the thought that somehow the anaphoric version of the no, no, it's the not final actually. story about truth is... Um, I mean, um, so uh, no, what, is, what is said uh, um, um, doesn't refer to some, you know, determinate thing. No. But now, um, 
uh, uh, yeah, Mark. It's just that you mentioned as part of the oh. advantage of the anaphoric uh, version of the deflation. Yeah, and we, we don't need to do anything metalinguistic, uh, baggage. I mean, uh, uh, precisely, uh, the idea of what is said is not baggage. Right. It's a, it's a uh, um, complicated but still easily yeah. graspable idea. And it's perfectly innocuous to say is true, says something about one of them. Yeah, that's um, true. So, so, right. And, <laughs> and then what does it say? Uh, that can be captured by, yeah. by, if you know what it is, yeah. saying it. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, that's right. That's, that's sort of any old version of the deflation. Well, that's well, not well, well, now that, that, anaphoric. Well, you know, now, John, you're pushing me back towards what had been my view, that, yeah. that it doesn't, uh, that <laughs> that there's no <laughs> great advantage of any of these versions over the But, but, but that's the if anything, the anaphoric one is kind of worse because <laughs> it's, 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 it's blocked it's, it's your Austinianism awkwardly I mean, uh-huh. I mean Austinianism Austinianism crudely put as you were putting it is you know if you know agreeing to whether the milk's in the refrigerator so and so says you know is the milk in the refri- is there milk in the refrigerator yeah, or whatever it's two drops have been spilt on okay. the shelf so, yeah. so, um, <laughs> so um, agreeing to what is said you know that it's true Depends upon understandings. You know, it does, yes. You know, on a very thin description of the context, um, it can turn out there's actually a contextual difference because there's two different understandings in play. And those two different understandings will make a difference to what is said and thus whether one takes what is said to be true. But now we have a difference, which is not a difference in a fine shade of understandings, but the difference is one of them understands, the other one doesn't. And we're saying they agree to the same thing. You know, that's, you know, I think... Austin would find that, you know, to com- you know, completely drop out the contextualism. I think Austin would say there is something which is somebody's saying, whatever he says, I take it to be true because I know, uh, you know, he's a wise man and, I'm, and et cetera. But if you ask, you know, if you ask the further question, um, so you agree with it, I think Austin would say, you know, that's a joke. I can't answer the question whether I agree with it because I don't know what it is. I'm just taking it, whatever it is, to be true. Uh, um, so, I mean, I don't think you can have very fine differences in context allow for differences in understanding because we're understanding, you know, m- you know, it slightly differently here or some slightly differently here, but have a difference across understanding the language and not understanding the language at all make no difference to um, to uh, you know how what is said combines with well I agree I agree it sounds odd to say agreeing in a situation where you don't know what you're Agreeing to, I, and that does sound rather peculiar, but I agree there is a I mean, in a, in a sense, though, but, from but, the other but you are committed to agreeing when you agree. When what, you know, when you find out what it is. That there is you, this Brandilmian fact that, that, that you can inherit all sorts of yeah. commitments that happen behind your back. Um, you know, I can take the Queen's showing, and I'm screwed in all kinds of ways, even though I didn't know this about the Queen's showing. But running a story about how you can inherit commitments that run behind your back with an Austinian story about what is involved in grasping what is said, which I think is importantly something that doesn't run behind your back, I think makes for a lot of trouble. And then the other so point, which is what? in grasping no. what is said, no. the commi- what you commit yourself to can outrun what you foresee, I, well, I think is pretty immature. Well, it, yeah, it just raises the risk. And what Jim is doing, and I'm not seeing why this is not, why Mark can't handle the Austinian mm-hmm. story or the different understandings. But It just raises it, the risk of agreement. But I think I, I mean. do see, which is, uh, so Jim earlier was talking about um, Mm-hmm. The, 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 just because there's a, there's a kind of commitment that it, his case, right? Uh, you know, someone says in, a, uh, in, in Estonian, uh, we should we should all leave the room immediately. Just because there might be a, a sense in which you who don't understand Estonian have now, if you say and everything he says is true, you 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 have you have commitments that Jim who understands Estonian and also thinks what he says is true. 
have. Jim is insisting there's a kind of difference in commitment. Isn't belief a word for the different commitment? I mean, it seems like it would be very odd at this point. I mean, it's very natural to say, Jim believes that we should get the fuck out of the room. And it's very odd to say that you believe we should get out of the room. You're, here you are, you're in some sense committed to the truth of what he said, but you don't believe it. You don't believe what he said. It seems like belief actually picks out sure. the difference that's in the... That's my point that that clause is picking out a completely sure. different sure. So, so, like, yeah, I, I didn't think any, you would disagree I with that. Say, I just thought it was... I can literally thing. say anything anyone wants to say about that consistent with saying that the function of truth talk is also to pick up some structures. And, 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 and again, the, the theory is much more complicated. You can pick up this bits and pieces and all these things. None of this Austinian stuff in any... No, Ray has any implications for this because there's no claim being made about that. understanding. No, Jim was. Uh, it, 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 yeah, no, I don't see that. How, nothing how to do with you understanding. Yeah. It was not a theory of understanding at all. It's just a theory of, 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 of picking up. And, 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 you know, John, I mean. But you were playing a little fast and loose with, don't you all believe quantum mechanics? I mean, if you put, a, if you okay, put some equation of quantum mechanics on the blackboard, you know, and you say, well, do you, you know, this is what the quantum physicists say. Do you believe it? I might say, well, I believe it's true, if that's yeah, what they're, I, but I don't I believe it. I don't understand. Well, that's, I, I, well, I, that, that's I, right. That, 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 a belief that, implies understanding yeah. in a way that, in, that that's saying true. You're right. Yeah. Doesn't, but, I mean, but notice even belief is slightly slippy because, I mean, you might draw a fairly elementary logical consequence of things that I have avowedly believed that said, oh, so you believe, blah, 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 and then I think, Oh, wait a minute. You know, in other words, you, as it were, uh, you've identified a commitment, and I think that's parallel to when I incautiously predicate truth of something I don't fully understand or where there's no shared understanding, and then I find out that... Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not right. saying it's not complicated. I don't, yeah. Jim was saying it's not complicated. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that I think Jim is, is right that there are sort of fundamental differences in our commitment at the point. Well, not only that, but there's, I'm thinking, and maybe we could all agree on this, but let's just tease it out for a minute, that there's, there's, you know, relations of dependence here. I mean, I'm not saying there isn't a funny, complicated case in which I can have the belief that what somebody says is true without believing what they say, because I understand it. But I think that, as it were, projection of the expression blank is true into that context is only one that has any sense because first of all I know how things that I do understand sure. are true. Um, well, the root home of right, all so. talk is talk in communities where we understand each other pretty similarly of course right. and so similarly for true. Most of the time I'm just saying, oh, that was true, but that one maybe not. And in, in a context where I understand, I mean, of course. But, but so the, the basic... But, but the I basic do think it's really important that it, it, it's a very valuable, and I think it adds something really important. The, the one thing that I think is the most concrete advantage of the effort is it allows us to do the projections into ignorance, the, 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 the social dependence projections into ignorance, whereas any of these other theories, I have to first, I, I have to identify what my target is if I'm going to predicate of it, right? Well, um, why won't what he said do that? What he said is true. Oh, 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 oh. So why won't what he said do that job? Yeah, yeah, exactly. sorry, I'm sorry. You can try to jam all the anaphora into the, into the subject position mm -hmm. and then predicate that. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. You can, you can, that's, that's not the Horwich view, but, but, but yeah, you can... You can what he told you, I'm sure it's true. You know, I don't know. I don't want to know what That's it is. An it's not my business. Right. There, you know. There's an <laughs> but do it. <laughs> um, I, 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 there's some subtle points having to do with the quantificational uses that I think are importantly different between the. You, so you can shove all the an anaphora into the subject position and then take history to be a predicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that gives you some unfortunate consequences when you start. Uh, either uh, s uh, propositionally quantifying or predicatively second or third order quantifying, a a and it forces you to treat things as of a of a kind. But I don't know that these are refutations. I just think they're. Sort of I mean, crazy. look. Let, let me tell. Let, okay, so so, so let me tell you why I've never been attracted to the anaphoric view until recently. You know, till now yours. Until twenty minutes ago. ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, now, but, I mean, superficially. You know, just ordinary school book grammar, truth is predicate. And, and, and I think you need some fairly compelling reasons to depart from 
superficiality here. I mean, you know, I mean, you're really saying that as it were the the logical character, so to say, of, of this kind of talk isn't born on its face, whereas my thought was that it is born on its face. And uh, you can get all the expressive uses you want out of it being born on its face, particularly when you, you have, as it were, devices, referential devices to pick up the anaphonic functions, like what he said or what, the, uh, what, what your friend told you, you know, um, what you read in the New York Times. Yeah, we got all those kinds of... Of, 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 of things um, to point you towards content which I then commit to by by the truth predication and it's a little that, harder that, that was my that was my real reason for sticking with the predicate it's just you know it's a non-revisionary um, no, you notice that's a different than any of the theories you actually mentioned in the paper yeah. this is a nominal anaphoric with truth predicate theory that's not yeah. Horwich's theory it's not that Seller's version of Horowitz. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's not Tarski. It's, a, it's a yet a different one. But well, but, but, but they're not. I mean, they. Huh? They, they add up McDowell, right. McDowell's uh, right. Because, because when you get them, what he said, then, then, then you are committed through some form of the inference from from P is true to P to exactly what he said what it specified so I mean it, 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 no it's not it, it's not that the disquotational or um, Horrid type theory isn't doing any work there I mean the bringing in the admissibility of those inferences precisely tells you when you get a specification of what was said <coughs> then the inference kicks in from he said that uh, from it's true therefore that uh, you know I, I repeat how, how would you handle the sentence? There exists a. Uh, I'll put it in proposition talk, but okay. I can translate this out very easily with a propositional quantifier. There exists a proposition that no one is, has or ever will express that's true. There I, is. I think that's true. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that's true. I think I can prove it mathematically based on assumptions about the cardinality of total set of people. Uh, but there exists a proposition that has never been expressed. Say I that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, that's a very simple quantificational claim. If you give me a, a, a propositional quantifier, uh, that is a pro grammatical propositional quantifier. If I, I think you have to go to postulating, if you want to go with this, said. making it nominal, you have to postulate things said as as yeah. objects yeah. were quantified. Things said easily extends to things sayable. Yeah. It doesn't make yeah. Any it's multiple. Yeah, I, I don't want to let those things into my ontology. Haven't been said. I don't want to no believe in those. But, uh, I, I, I don't know why you're making such a big deal. <laughs> over, over. Uh, it, it, it's a routine idea. That's that's where Michael was, and I think he should have stayed there. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting back. To <laughs> 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 it was a nice journey. There. <laughs> I shouldn't have left home, you know. It was a mistake. <laughs> rhetoric of baggage, but it, um, it, all it is is, is um, working with this completely intuitive idea of, I don't know, what sayables. Mm -hmm. um, and no pretense that in talking about sayables you're, you're, you're uh, talking about um, some kind of thing, right, instances well, of yeah. which are, are um, um, uh, as well individuated as, I don't know, natural numbers or what, some kind of thing like that. No, you, you, because, because what they are is uh, what we um, refer to by the use of this a perfectly familiar way of talking, what he said. Yeah. Um, when, when I refer to it, uh, David says something, David said a bunch, and um, the third sentence that David uttered, uh, what he said in uttering that sentence. Yeah, I mean, we can't make a mystery about it. The rest of it was wrong, but the third <laughs> one, what he said, in, in uttering the third one, what he said was true. A perfectly um, okay thought. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know every last thing about what no, um, no. commitments I'm undertaking and saying that it's true. Um, the, the idea that it's baggage um, um, conceiving is true as a, a metalinguistic in the sense that it's a predicate alleging that something holds of mm -hmm. something that's linguistic in the sense in which there was a linguistic 
it's not baggage, it's routine. And uh, the, 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 the thing is, that, that um, deflationism is, is, is great, the content of the predicate is captured by uh, a story about what declarative performances are. And, and what uh, this way of doing it, which isn't, I agree, it's right, it's not, it isn't any of the ones that Michael had in the paper, what this way of doing it has as an advantage over um, the anaphoric way is that we don't pretend to understand a declarative, um, a form of a declarative uh, that you can yourself perform by a, an, any old anaphoric reference to a sayable. So if you're clueless about which sayable it is that you are anaphorically referring to, but, but shouldn't you, um, shouldn't there's something very peculiar about the idea that, that, that a, a certain declarative is yeah. within your power. But of course that there's a declarative uh, that's within your power that has the form what he said was true. I'm sure of that because... But, but, never but, but shouldn't it be just, on your view, shouldn't it be just as hard for you to refer to what he said if you have no idea what it is? I mean, isn't that a standard no, McDowell? Whatever, I have whatever, no whatever he said is a perfectly... But how do you know I have no idea what David idea? was on about, but he never speaks falsely, so... So we've got I 10 minutes. Is there any yeah, issue? I, can, yeah, I can't say. I can no more say it than I can believe it. I, mean, I can, can say that it's true. Yeah. We can get even more yeah. extreme cases where I'm committed to whatever the Estonian said. Yeah, the Estonian made noises. Yeah. Um, and it's explained to me actually he was gargling and cleaning his mouth. He didn't say anything. Then mm -hmm. he failed to, he right, failed right, to right, pick right. up anything. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so in that case, I'm only under the illusion of being under a commitment. Sure. In, in, you know, right. Sure. But, um, Right. I mean, I mean, I think, I think that <laughs> for both of us, I mean, right. I mean there's no, that, that makes no difference between these two views whatsoever. Right. I mean, but let's see if there's a question on something else. We've been, we, we, sure. we've been going around this forever. Did we, are there other hands? I mean, surely there's other things in Michael's favor. <laughs> 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 or not? That was um, interesting. Um, quick, quick I, I, I didn't really um, get on top of what all was in the paper. Um, but I've got a bit that I, that I got to in my quick run ah. through it. Um, I, I thought the hard cost um, was want to know about picturing. Um, right, I, I, well, I, not for, I don't have I don't to think of that. But um, on, on page 37, um, uh, in the sense of God, right? <laughs> uh, it should, there's an asthmic in that. Well, Rorty treats picturing as a condition of meaning. Yes. And I think the thrust of what's going on here is that that's wrong. It is, the, and you, yeah. And, 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 and you think you can establish that it's wrong. I mean, wrong about Sellers. On the ground that, which is perfectly correct, Sellers insists that picturing is not a semantic relation, yeah. i.e. a relation between items in the intentional order, items in the natural order. Uh, it's a relation between two sorts of items in the natural All of that seems to me to be dead right. Yeah. But um, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just not understanding what um, condition of meaning means. But um, uh, um, there's something to mean by saying picturing, um, according to Sellers, is, is a condition of meaning that, that doesn't contradict. Um, no, this, it's not semantical. Um, um, were it not the case that uh, the, the regularities that are reflected by uh, the, the norms of performance in a speech practice um, uh, uh, en enabled us to construct uh, picturing relations between um, those languagings, <laughs> so this is horrible expression, conceived as um, events in the natural order on the one hand and um, other sorts of things in the natural order. Were, were that not the case, uh, there would be no way we could uh, understand uh, these moves in this practice as meaningful. There's, there's a thing to mean by picturing as a condition. Yeah, I, I, were, it, were, were there not picturing relations between languagings as <coughs> elements in the yeah, natural yeah, order, yeah. which they are, and other things in the natural order. I am not sure whether Sellers thinks that or not. Maybe you think he does. Yeah, I do. Um, I think that's the because, point of talking because, about the, uh, because languaging as elements in the natural order. So that it can't uh, be. No, so. Uh, um, on one side of picturing relations, and why does it matter? 
answer because if there weren't. Okay, so so and let me tell you how I read. Bill knows understands that. Stuff. Let me oh, let me tell you how I read him, and then you you'll just tell me why you don't agree with this. Um, the the way I read him is that semantic meaning in his story you've got that when you've got language entry transitions language entry, exit transitions and intralinguistic moves and, and, I, and actually in science and metaphysics that's what he says because he gives you a complete list of all the, what counts as a semantical rule and picturing is not it what, what picturing does is segregate a particular subclass of meaningful things to say, namely basic factual propositions. So it, it, it's a specific difference. It's not a condition of meaning, semantic content. It's a condition on basic factual meaning. Now, um, now Seller's view in science and metaphysics is that this is a very, very narrow class of propositions. So, um, 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 what we would think of as the natural laws articulated in scientific theories are not in this sense factual. I mean, because they are modally inflected, they're on the list of semantical rules in, in, in science and metaphysics. I mean, in other words, they, they give conditions of semantic assertability, as, as a matter of fact. That it, it, You find yourself wondering whether they can, strictly speaking, be true. And it, he doesn't really have much to to tell you about that. I mean, uh, you know, there's a certain strict way of reading the definition of semantic assertability that suggests they aren't because they, they actually set the rules for semantic assertability, but they're not themselves um, semantically assertable. So, so my reading, which I guess is not yours, is that um, semantic meaning is completely accounted for with the list of semantic rules that he gives in science and metaphysics, which does not include any reference to picturing. That comes in when you segregate out, amongst all the things there are to mean, those which are what he calls basic factual look, pro- you, it propositions. Sounds like, like so you're, you're calling... And I think Rorty misses the selective function of picturing. He just thinks, right, he thinks there's no meaning without picturing. I think that's not Sellers' view. Well, I think, uh, I think you need to say it more carefully. Um, okay. there, the, the, the language entry, exit, and interlinguistic moves... Um, those are conditions of meaning in sort of the constitutive sense. They, yeah, they're, right. they're what constitute that's right. uh, the meaning of uh, so things. Mean? But there's another sense of a condition of meaning, sort of a necessary condition uh, of meaning, which is not itself constitutive of meaning. It doesn't. It's not part of the meaning, and it's not part of uh, what makes. Uh, any particular uh, word have the meaning it does, and he, and he does think that it's, it's sort of a, if you want to put it this way, a transcendental condition on the fact or on our languages being about the world in which it is used that there be uh, a picturing relation between some of the uh, utterances in the language and uh, objects in the world, and if you if there weren't that kind of uh, uh, well, if you want to call it correspondence between uh, patterns of utterances and patterns of, I, of, of objects, so it, then the language wouldn't be about the world in which it is I used. And in that sense, meaningless. I don't see how he could say that because that introduces a notion of about that he repudiates. You're, you're now suggesting that there's a kind of you know. Robust. Ref- I mean, maybe he does think this, but he shouldn't. You no, seem to be reference. reconstructing some it's not a reference. notion it's not of reference. No, 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 it's not. It's well, not what's about? It's not reference. Uh, look, no meaning without picturing uh, was the way you reduced it to a slogan. And and um, Bill's right. We have to be careful. The, the Salazian thought is no meaning anywhere in language, unless there's picturing in some of. <laughs> what people do and uh, with language. But and I, it doesn't matter that um, okay. uh, uh, factual talk uh, conceived as marked out by uh, the, 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 the claim that picturing gets a grip on it only is highly restricted. <laughs> uh, the Stelazian thought is something like there's got to be 
uh, something that can be singled out like that. It's got to be a, a, a region of languagings uh, <coughs> that are picturing and in picturing relations sure. too. Sure. Uh, the, the, the okay, well, you know, maybe, 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 maybe I'll otherwise have none of it is, right. is meaningful. Maybe I'll have to correct that, but it's not even the, the, the yeah. um, you know, non-declarative, you know, all the, the well, Lance Cookler. Um, you know, maybe I'll have to correct that, but I must say I don't see the argument for that because if you take this, um, it's a terrible argument. I mean, if you t if you thought this was a good view. You you would be question. Yeah, but, but yeah. this is why I think I was being charitable. You, you'd be <laughs> you'd be committed. <laughs> you'd be committed to the view. I mean, look, Brandon could be wrong for lots of reasons, but you'd be committed to the view that his view of meaning failed completely because by virtue of not allowing for picturing. In other words, yeah. getting, getting no, all the no, no, transitions... What, what happens is it, 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 he thinks that if you don't have picturing, then you end up, as Brandon does, mm -hmm. a Hegelian idealist. Of the well, that's, well, that's yeah. not quite fair to Brandon. He's got his own two-ply theory. And so yeah. yeah, that's what I'm, right. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, but, that's, but, that's, I mean, right. but, but what well, he says is that, but, but is that picturing is the Archimedean point which Look, enables Bill, us to Bill. save ourselves from speech the tragedy of the idealism. Look, Bill, what I argue is, and maybe this isn't Sellers, but I think Sellers should have said this, because I think he has other reasons to do with Hegelian ideas about picturing. But surely, if you've got the object involvement as an essential part of your theory of how meaning is constituted then you've already got a perfectly good sense yep. in, in which language is about the world. Right, but, but, but notice, I mean, the picturing is a transcendental condition. It's not like we, 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 we figure out what the pictures are, I never and said, then that makes I us never, able I to never, be, I never no. said that it was. I said it's not doing any work as a transcendental condition. Oh, well, that may be I, I don't right. see the work that it's Paul doing. Sellers, which, and he's wrong. But, but, but That's my view. He's Paul wrong, is. so I charitably cut that up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to, like, so we were almost to quitting, but you know, just to be fair to Brandon, right? Brandon's view is that the asking about the relation between language and the world is a but, I, but I will change that. Is like asking about the relation between me and China. The problem isn't that there isn't one, but that there's a lot. Yeah. He, this is that's Brandon's. View. So his view of what's doing all this anchoring work is a million little causal connections. You know, I say pass the water, and I grab that. That's one. It, now, now the objection from John is that they're all causal; they're not normative, and that's you know bringing you back into the But but it's not that there's no anchoring in the world, and we just have to be that right. charitable to Bob. It's not just spinning around right. idealism; it's causal. So, yeah. He thinks causal's enough. Mm -hmm. um, but so we started with the claim that Michael was the least charitable, and now we've ended with the claim that Michael's too charitable, which seems like a great place to thank him. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make a few announcements uh, quickly. First of all, um, I'm supposed to thank our sponsors. They're listed on the uh, flyer. You can read their Whatever names. they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm accept the report from Mark Lance today. Those guys. That's who I thank. Um, second announcement, um, I'd like to thank um, all of you who managed to stay until the very end for your incredible fortitude, and especially our participants, and especially those who came from very far away. Some of them did to cross the ocean. And, what? Well, I was thinking about the ones from Germany, especially, John. Um, but finally, and we can sort of bundle all these into one big bank before we clap, I would like to thank the person who is actually responsible, the people who are responsible for organizing this whole thing and putting it together. And those two people really are Jill Hipner and Elad Neer in the back of the Thank you. You're free to go. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how. So, so, I mean, he would. I mean, I like, could <laughs> 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 language. If you want to continue discussion, yeah, that's great. Math, please do it in the other room so we can rearrange the <laughs> 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 here. No. We can lock up and.
because you wouldn't have a the part of some people in here that's what you're about to work. I'm sure you have an I mean, they would have I'm not going to. Thanks for the argument. I'm sure. I'm flying over. I'm here with you. Thanks. Well, it's great to see you again. Yeah. 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 Ye